first, I too would like to congratulate Francoise. Although being in Washington, we are going to miss you. At least you're not too far away. Um, and also, uh, since this is the art of diplomacy, I have to say we are looking at an exceptional, truly an exceptional, extraordinaire a diplomat. I would take this question in a slightly different direction. I think that Francois laid out uh, especially the point of a diplomat's role in terms of bringing people together. But I also thought of the word démarche, a French word, démarche. And you know the interesting aspect of it, diplomats deliver démarches. The traditional way of delivering a démarche and a statement of policy to another country has changed so dramatically. It used to be the formal document and it used to be carried over from embassy to embassy. Those days are long, long gone. In fact, I will go fast forward to being at a lunch that was hosted by the Singapore ambassador in Washington. And at the time, this is the previous one, she posed the question, how many of you hear Twitter? And there were diplomats in the room and all of them raised their hands. And they said, we Twitter to get our message across. So the time of and the element of diplomacy and the role of diplomats has certainly shifted. You have to be on your issues, you have to be ready, <laughs> and you have to engage at a moment's notice in terms of what is before you. So I will put that in the mix. Francoise mentioned the importance of global issues. I was Under Secretary of State for Democracy and Global Affairs, and to me, it really played out and demonstrated really how the role of a diplomat has changed. And I'm gonna give you a graphic example. The foreign minister of uh, Uruguay was dispatched to my office by the president of Uruguay and by the secretary of state. The reason was he came to my office because he said he had a dilemma. The president of Uruguay then was not only president but happened to be an oncologist. And he wanted to create a state of the art <coughs> cancer center. And so he said to me, you know, I'm a diplomat. And honestly, I don't know where to begin with this. Can we fix this together? So my role was that of a solution finder. We amassed a delegation uh, uh, of both public and private sector and we brought it to Uruguay. And we actually looked at solutions of how you build that state-of-the-art cancer center. Why did it matter in diplomacy? It mattered greatly in diplomacy because what was so central here was the president of Uruguay, by the way, was not someone who naturally had a natural, I would say, fit with then President George W. Bush. But I will tell you, after this particular initiative, it did exactly what Francoise was pointing out. How you not only bring people together, but you go outside traditional avenues and you actually engage in ways that really make a difference. And that then is remembered when you have to deal with maybe hardcore, maybe trade issues or other types of disputes. And that kind of personal engagement and when you help one another and the creative element of being a diplomat has entered into the field. And let me just add the third, and that's public-private partnerships. Bob touched upon it, but now you have a number of players. The instruments are vast. Mm -hmm. Business, the role of businesses play a role. Uh, NGOs, and in some cases, uh, diplomats find themselves actually not necessarily being in the lead. They will work through other organizations. Why? Because it might be the most effective way to go. So I would say that there are many contrasts. You have some traditional roles, but you also have really new arsenal <laughs> and tools and a new framework of, of really advancing diplomacy and engaging other countries. Thank you, Paula.